Okay, so I now have a proper microphone. It only took me, what, I think I've made 20 of these videos so far, and I finally got a real microphone that works. This feels great. Um, so now you hopefully won't have to bump the volume on all of the videos that you've seen so far. If anything, you might have to go down. So I'll try not to yell or uh, talk too loud on these. So I'm just gonna look at this general equation here where we're being asked to graph the solutions of each system. Uh, graphing this problem scenario that we had up here wasn't too bad. Um, of course, we can always see from substitution or elimination, we could graph those out as well. Uh, with inequalities, this is a little different. So I'm not gonna necessarily draw out the example on what these are gonna look like. We'll switch to the calculator. So you'll see how that's done on a calculator. But a few descriptions here that I wanna highlight on would be if we're graphing a system, in my eyes, isolating all of the variables for y is a good look. So that's a good goal to have if you really need to just graph with pen and paper or pencil and paper is to isolate y. From there, it should look like a slope-intercept form equation. And you should know how to graph those. You should also be able to determine pretty easily the type of line you're using. Is it gonna be solid or is it gonna be dashed? In addition to that, are you gonna be shading above or below? Of course, if y is greater than some equation, you'll be shading above the line, whereas if y is less than some equation, you're shading below the line. So uh, with this, I'm just gonna highlight on a few characteristics before I switch to the calculator. So this is y values greater than x minus five. I know that this is gonna be a dashed line. So this is definitely dashed. I'm also shading above. I know my slope's gonna be positive one, although it's not written, we can assume that that's the imaginary coefficient. So the slope is positive one, or if you wanna write it as a fraction to use rise over run, one over one. Y-intercept is negative five. And so that's kind of nice for that first equation. It's already isolated for Y. For the second equation, however, we need to do a little bit of work to isolate y. So how can we isolate y for this second equation? We only need one step, but what's that step? Well, if we move 3x to the other side, we have y values less than or equal to negative 3x minus 2. From here, we should be able to say a lot about this. So this is definitely going to be a solid line because it's equal to, that's the key factor. We're shading below. And slope's negative three. And our y-intercept's negative two, which I'll just denote as b. So we have a decent amount of information for both of these. Uh, I think it's important to highlight on this before you start graphing, just so that you have your ideas in order. So for graphing this, I'm gonna use the calculator. I think Desmos does a pretty good job of highlighting on how these uh, look, and you can modify those pretty easily, so check out Desmos if you're stuck. But for graphing this, I'm gonna be hitting Y equals, and I'll go through the beginning, so. Uh, if we start fresh, I know the two equations that I graph are in slope-intercept form, so I have y where it's greater than x minus 5, and I'm not going to modify the equal sign. We'll see what I do in a second. So I'm just writing x minus 5. I know that y values are greater than x minus 5, so I know I'm shading above the line. And so if we go and move our cursor all the way to the left, if we then start to hit enter, if we keep hitting enter, we'll see that cursor change. We can end up with dots for the line. We can end up with a dashed line, which is kind of cool if you're going for just greater than or equal to. You could do the solid line. But the main one that we want to go with is that we're shading. 
So this was Y greater, we're shading above this line. And so we'll put that in play just for this first equation. So as you can see, this has a positive slope. It looks as if it's going up and to the right. So we can assume the slope's one over one. Uh, we can also see the y-intercept. If we hit trace, we can get a graph of this. If we hit second and then graph, but these are pretty much just going to be the points for y where it's equal to x minus 5. For the second equation, we're going to be using the slope-intercept format. So we have y and then negative 3x minus 2. And we're going to be modifying this. So out of the options here, which of these do you think we're going to need to use if we're shading below the line. So if we keep hitting enter, these all change, but eventually this one's going to be the best fit because we see the line, although the slope's negative, it might be a positive line, but we see that we're definitely shading below the line that's cutting through on this image here. So if we hit graph, we then see that second equation coming into play. So we see all the solutions are where the two colors intersect. It's a little hard to tell if you're using a t calculator. Desmos does a really great job of color coordinating this, but all of our solutions would be below this line, but above this line that's going from left to right. So all of our solutions are in here. And of course, it's up to you to figure out which one is a uh, dashed and solid because they don't necessarily have that uh, as an option for the calculator.